In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. To Shabbat Shalom, Nasty. Tonight, I like to continue on the theme of Saint Paisios' book, with the chapter entitled "Self-Love and Its Consequences." One day, a young monk approached. Saint Paisios and said, Yenanda, what is self love? Now, self love is to do the will of the old man within you, and that is to love that old man within gluttony, egoism. Abstinency and envy. All have self love as the main source. And so, as you see, that one person seeks to accommodate only himself out of self love with any regards to anyone else. They don't care about the person next to them. They don't care about their neighbor. Another desires to be taken into account, to be held in a place of esteem. If he is slighted in the very least, if he doesn't get his way, he acts very badly. It's somewhat like a child who's spoiled. When they don't get their way, how do they act? Out of control. He thinks, why aren't they taking me into consideration? I'll show them. Indeed, self-love, according to the teachings of St. Paisios, is a terrible thing. Then all of a sudden, the young Monk asks, Yaronda, how can anyone say, for thy sake, we are all, we are killed all the day long? And the holy saint, Paisios, tells him, if he sacrifices his will for another's sake, it will contain our self within, within it. It is self-love. Whoever doesn't invest whether that which comforts him also comforts someone else. But instead, starts by making demands like, I want this, I want that. Or, why didn't you do this for me? But you did it for him. Why didn't you give me this? But you gave it to that person. In the end, all this is to be found within the workings of the evil one. There's some people. The young monk said, who cannot be at peace unless they get their way. How can they ever find peace since they place themselves in what they want? Stop and think, and think of that for one moment. How can you have peace if you concentrate on so many things in life. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want, I want, I want. It never ends. If one places himself in all things he wants, can he also have room for Christ in his life? When he does not have his own self and has instead the one the most important, that is Christ, 
then he has everything, believe it or not. One who doesn't have Christ in his life has nothing. If a person throws away his own self, God will give him everything in a marvelous, in a fantastic way. Then the young monk sprang up and asks the holy man, Yet on that, when you speak to us about throwing away the, the self, our egos, and so forth, I fear, he says, that I will not be able to endure. And Saint Paisios responds, Oh my, just what is going on with you? It is as if you are saying, if you throw away the passions, then what will I have? When I say throw away the self, I mean to throw away our passions, to be diverted of the old man within. For a grown person is aware of the consequences. It is rather grave to say, he writes, I cannot throw away my own self. If someone were to tell me, take out a sledgehammer, knock down this wall, when you are, when you are only used to using a pen to write, then it is justifiable for you to say, I cannot do that. For you don't need a physical strength for diverting yourself of the old man within. All you need is humility. Self-love, believe it or not, is the desire to eat or to rest more than necessary. Normally, we should give our body only what it needs. Desire is one thing. Need is quite another. It is one thing to want to please the body and another thing to give the body what it needs. Let's suppose that I have before two types of food that are equally nutritious, but one of them is tastier than the other. If I choose the tastier one, then my action is one of self-love. But if I have no appetite because of I'm ill or I can't taste anything, and I prefer to eat the tastier food for health reasons, then in order to be able to eat it, my action is one of discernment. The body, for instance, and we'll use the evil tax collector. The evil tax collector, as Abba Makarios calls it, may yearn for something more depending on what it's used to receive it. If a person limits his intake, then he can easily practice self-control, which will then require being full. Take, for example, an extremely overweight person. He has, much, he has such a large capacity for food will have to eat half a calf in order to feel full, then drink two gallons of water as well, according to St. Makarios. And all of a sudden, as this saying was being said, 
Somebody stood up and said, yeah, no, no. wait a minute. Did people have a stronger constitution in the past? Or did they exert themselves more? Of course, they had a slightly stronger constitution. But they never, but they were under harder. They were also harder on themselves back then. The elder Hadzi Yorgis would give his novices in his monastery a little bit of honey and walnuts to eat every day. And these were young men in their teens, in the midst of their development, but who also were spiritually developing. Nowadays, think about it, in a world in which we live. Don't let the children fast, we hear, because they might get sick. Don't let the children be deprived of anything so they won't have difficulties later on in life. They end up being miserable, wanting to eat hamburgers, chicken nuggets, happy meals, steaks, chicken, you name it, anything that there is all the time. However, there is no point in the worldly way of thinking. It is of no benefit whatsoever. When one gladly resists eating out of love for Christ, then he is indeed well nourished. Our Lord tells us this. I will give you ample food. I will gird you with strength. I will give you what is needed. If he prefers it, to give us certain foods, he will. If he prefers to give us other foods that are more delicious out of love for him, then Christ will do so. Love of self overcomes love of our neighbor all of a sudden. Another young novice asks St. Paisios, he says, Yeah, I'm not today, an elderly man was having difficulty climbing the steps to the church. And while many passed by, no one, no one would help them. It sounds so familiar of the gospel lesson we just heard of the paralytic a couple days ago when he was at the pool of Bethesda. When an angel would come down from heaven, put his finger in the water and trouble the water, and whoever came first would be healed. And how we heard the paralytic step tell Christ, I have no one to pick me up and bring me to the water. A priest, St. Paisio said, when he saw him, He passed by on the other side. And then a Levite, likewise, when he saw him, passed onto the other side. They are justified, he said, because they don't know any better. They have never heard the gospel or the parable of the Good Samaritan. And 
This elder, the holy, pious saint, went on to say, What can I say? We love ourselves. We do not love others. The love we have for ourselves over others comes. And the love we should have for our neighbor, which is why we act this way, will come. For whoever loves his own self more than others does not live in accordance with the Spirit of God and his gospel. If Christ himself had not thought only of his own self, he would have stayed in heaven. He would not have come to earth to suffer, to be crucified in order to save each and every one of us. Nowadays, there is a greater or a lesser degree of self-love in most people. The spirit of sacrifice does not exist. Another spirit has entered within our lives. Let nothing bad happen to me. You know how much pain I feel when I see how people are, he said. Recently, when I was at the hospital, I saw how a bedridden patient was transferred to another room. There was a male nurse who did not assist at all, even though that was his job. I can't do it. My back is hurting me, he said, with such an air of indifference. My mind St. Paisio said, to see such an inhuman person. And then to see a female nurse, a mother of two, and she was expecting a third, together with another female nurse, strain herself in order to lift this patient up. The poor thing did not think of herself at all. She forgot her own condition and ran to assist the patient. When I see a person engaged in difficulties who may not have much courage, but who sacrifices themselves in order to serve others, it gives me great joy, he writes. It makes my heart leap. And to conclude, I finish with this final sentence. St. Paisios writes, I feel like I am related to him because he too is related to God. Amen. Christos Sinestri, everyone. May God bless you and keep you safe.